Championship Burke. And the season ends at the 2021 PFL World Championship. Six title fights, the winner of each earns the belt and $1 million. So that's how it works. Light heavyweights and welterweights vying for points in our regular season, a trip to the playoffs, and an eventual chance at a $1 million championship. And starting us off on ESPN Plus will be these two gentlemen. Lillian Garcia puts them on the scale. Well, thank you, Sean, and good evening, everyone. You can tell we are fired up for this week's fights, and we are fired up for the weigh-in. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get everything started with our first fighter in the blue corner, fighting out of Tunsberg, Norway. Here is Martin Hamlet. His official weight, 205 and 3 quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Columbus, Ohio, Dan the Dragon Spawn. His official weight, 205 and 1 half pounds. Our second bout of the evening, the first fight of the season in our welterweight division. It's Sada Busi, the Swedish striker, welcoming Nikolai Alexakis back and actually introducing him to the regular season playoff and championship format. Alexakis has competed for the Professional Fighters League in showcase bouts, but he has not been part of the season just yet. What are we expecting from these two strikers, Randy? Well, it's definitely going to be a striking battle. Sada Busi coming down from 185, long, rangy, long kicks, great front kick. We've seen him kick Mashad in the liver the two seasons ago and put him out. So you look for him to definitely try and keep this at range and keep uh, Alex on, off of him and, and from tying him up. Alexander Alexakin, I got to tell you, Kenny, this guy, we saw him in showcase bouts, physical specimen, but he gives up a lot of reach to Sada Busi. Yeah, that's right. For him, he's going to have to get on the inside, try to use his boxing, maybe attack the body from there. But it's no easy task against C, who is very long, and he's an absolute sniper at range as well. It's our first welterweight bout of the season. Lillian Garcia introduces them. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, fighting out of Brinsk, Russia, here is Nikolai Alex Sahan. His official weight, 170 and 3 quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden, here is the Swedish Denzel Sadabusi. His official weight, 170 and 3 quarter pounds. of the evening is back in the light heavyweight division. Cesar Mutanche Ferreira will welcome Nick Rorick to the Professional Fighters League. Randy Couture, this is a guy you've been talking about all week. He helped you out in a training camp. What does Mutanche bring to the cage? Long, rangy striker, great jiu-jitsu background with very good submission skills. He's been on a tear in the sport for a while. I'm really excited to see him fight in person. Uh, he brings a capoeira background and he implements that into his fighting. So don't be surprised to see some crazy wheel kicks and all kinds of stuff from that, that genre. 
And he takes on a relative unknown. Nick Rorick is really making his first big show debut here in the PFL Smart Cage, Kenny. Yeah, that's right. And not a lot of people know about him or know about his style. I see that as a big time advantage. What we do know is he comes from an amazing camp, trains with Team Elevation in Colorado, also trains with Dwayne Bang Ludwig, one of the best striking coaches in the world. Both of these guys confident they can get not only three points for a win, but bonus points in our regular season standings. Lillian Garcia has them on the scale. Introducing to you next, in the blue corner, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, Nick Rorick. His official weight, 205 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, representing Brazil, here is Cesar Mutante Ferreira. His official weight, 205 and one half pounds. on ESPN Plus continues at light heavyweight. Jordan Young faces his third potential opponent of his regular season debut against Askar Mojarov, who comes to us from Ukraine. It has to be stated, gentlemen, Jordan Young was initially supposed to fight Shmilino Rama. Injury forced him out. Then it was Vinny Magalej. Unfortunately, on a short notice call, Vinny was una unable to make the weight, and the alternate Mojarov steps in, which means Jordan Young is on his third opponent in a month. Randy, that's tough to prepare for. That's very tough to prepare for, and it's tough to talk about Askar. We don't know that much about him, frankly. Comes from the Ukraine, looks to be a very formidable, muscular guy. I think he sure has got a lot of Sambo experience in the Ukraine. It'll be interesting to see how he competes and what Jordan is able to do with him. Kenny, what's your mentality for, for both of these guys coming into a fight like this where you know nothing about your opponent? You know, for Jordan Young, he does his best work on the ground, if we're being honest. He's, an, he's excellent with his submissions, but he was facing a guy in Magalesh who was even better in that realm. Uh, but here he's facing a striker. I think this is actually a better stylistic matchup for him. At least he knows what he needs to do, uh, a little bit clearer of what he needs to do to get the win here. An intriguing matchup at light heavyweight. Lillian Garcia introduces us to the fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, fighting out of Odessa, Ukraine, Askar Moharo. His official weight, 205 pounds. And in the red corner, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Jordan Young. His official weight, 205 and three quarter pounds. <laughs> A little spice here at the PFL weigh-in show. Very interesting. You see Jordan Young, you know, had his arms out, uh, you know, and Mozorov <laughs> did not like that at all. Knocked his hand across and pushed him on the neck. These guys don't like each other already. <laughs> and I don't think they even know each other, but yeah. they're going to get to know each other real well tomorrow night. Let's take a look at this again. Little little discussion there. Ooh, the throat push from <laughs> Askar Mozorov. Jordan Young doesn't like it. Thankfully, our president of fighter operations, Ray Sefo, is a formidable, imposing figure himself. Uh, keeps things calm, at least for now. S sometimes the, the fights are won and lost here at the weigh-ins. You know, something like that might trigger someone else and throw them off their game. So uh, interesting games here from the Russian. 
And he's new here. It doesn't, nobody really knows that much about him, and he's setting a tone for sure, uh, maybe trying to get into his opponent's head a little bit. So six points on the line in our regular season standings in that light heavyweight bout. I'm sure it's going to be a passionate, <laughs> passionate effort for both of them coming up tomorrow night. In our featured ESPN Plus bout, also at light heavyweight, Antonio Carlos Jr. and Tom Lawler both making their PFL debuts. These are two very experienced fighters, both of them with accomplished grap grappling backgrounds, of course, in different arts. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Like I said, our feature bout on ESPN Plus, eight of Antonio Carlos Jr.'s 10 career victories have come by submission. But is it that simple against a guy like Tom Lawler, Randy? Uh, you know, I don't think it is that simple. You know, Tom Lawler may have been out for three years, but I think that three years has allowed him to heal up. He's been doing a lot of pro wrestling in the lockdown. He says that's kept him in front of the crowd, kept him busy, kept him staying in shape. And even though it doesn't really translate to MMA, he feels like it's an advantage for him. I think he's going to come out strong. He's going to definitely want to try to put this fight on the ground. He's got to be careful when he puts him down there. Kenny, it's an age-old question. Is ring rust a factor when you're coming back off a long layoff? It can be. I don't think that's going to be the case for someone like Lawler. I think he's ready. He's motivated. Uh, and I think, you know, when you're doing that kind of performance in professional wrestling, I think that helps. So uh, I think we're going to see the best Tom Lawler we've ever seen. I tell you what, this is a guy who plays off the crowd. He's one of the best showmen in all of mixed martial arts. In fact, stepping on the scale, he might have a little treat for us. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> he's you know, hilarious. He's a kindred spirit in that <laughs> regard. So very much looking forward to watching him get back to competition. Lillian Garcia will get them going. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, filthy Tom Lawler. His official weight, 202 and three quarter pounds. And in the red corner, fighting out of Joan Passawa, Brazil, here is shoot face, Antonio Carlos Jr. His official weight, 205 and one half pounds. in our feature bout here. A quick question for Tom Lawler. Tom, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. You know, as I expected, even here in this strange empty environment, a little bit of fun from you, but it's been a while since we've seen you inside of actual competition. What should we expect in our feature bout on ESPN Plus tomorrow? I'm not Drake, but I'm gonna be in the six after this one. <laughs> I like it. Tom Lawler looking for six points, which may be good enough for a top of the light heavyweight standings. And for Shoeface, Antonio Carlos Jr., look, it, it's a fresh start for you in professional fighters league action. You're facing a guy who's got an accomplished grappling background himself. What happens tomorrow? I hope we've got a really great fight. I hope to get 6.2, you know, it falls on uh, my second fight. So a finish is what you're looking for. Always. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to it. Antonio Carlos Jr. and Tom Lawler, our feature bout on ESPN Plus to cap off things before we head to ESPN 2. Do not follow me, he says. <laughs> Speaking of ESPN 2, four bouts, two returning champions, a great Brazilian rivalry, and the debut of Rory McDonald. And some heavy, heavy betting favorites on this one for those so inclined. Ray Cooper the third, the biggest favorite on the card. We've seen him and his finishing power. I gotta tell you, I'm excited for our ESPN Plus card, but 
our welterweight division might be the most stacked in the entire professional fighters league and we get to see Emiliano Sordi tomorrow night. What are you most looking forward to, Randy Couture? Well, I, I, every time Ray Cooper steps out there, I, I'm on the edge of my seat. You just never know. The guy's explosive and ferocious. I love to watch him compete. And Kenny? For me, Sordi and Camozzi, two veterans, two guys that are very dangerous on the feet. That should be an amazing one. That's a returning champion who had five fights in 2019 and five finishes in Emiliano Sordi, and he's starting us off on ESPN2, not even in the main event. That's how spoiled you are as a professional fighters league fan. Chris Camozzi spent some time preparing during the pandemic by jumping back into competition as a kickboxer. And of course, Sordi was feeding the hungry quite literally in his hometown down in Argentina. Lillian Garcia starts off our ESPN two car. Ladies and gentlemen, do not forget because the ESPN card starts tomorrow. It is at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN two. You're gonna definitely not wanna miss out on that. And for the weigh-ins right now, we will begin with in the blue corner fighting out of Denver, Colorado, it's Chris Camozzi. His official weight, 202 and three quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Rio Cuarto, Argentina. He is the 2019 PFL light heavyweight world champion, Emiliano Togo Sordi. His official weight, 205 and one half pounds. Action on ESPN2 continues in the welterweight division. And I got to tell you, a healthy Joao Zeferino is a terrifying prospect for the rest of our welterweights. But he's got a tough task ahead of him against Gleason Tebow making his BFL debut. Randy Kenny, in season one of BFL action, we saw Joao Zeferino, very formidable. He's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialist, but it was the hands that really were on display back then. Of course, an injury forced him out of the season and the playoffs all the way back in season one. He's healthy, he's back, he's ready to go. What do we expect, Randy? Well, I think that uh, Zeferino brings an amazing amount of, of striking and submission to this fight. I like Gleason Tebow at this weight. I think this is a, a good idea for him not to be cutting so much weight. I think he's gonna have a lot more energy, uh, obviously stepping up. He's great in the clinch, he's, he's great on the inside, and, and a it could be a spoiler. And Kenny, look, Tebow, is game, he's tough, he's incredibly experienced. And the odds makers reflected how close they think this fight is going to be. Well, Tibau has an ability to steal rounds. He's so good at setting up his takedowns with really good strikes from the outside. His double leg is fantastic. Up against the cage, he's gonna be a nightmare for anyone, but Zeferino has a ton of experience himself. It's a Brazilian rivalry. Lillian Garcia introduces these fighters. In the blue corner, fighting out of Rio Grande do Norte, Brazil, here is Gleason Tebow. His official weight, 170 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Florianopolis, Brazil, here is the Brazilian Samurai, Joao Stefanino. His official weight, 171 pounds.
ESPN2 action continues with another highly anticipated matchup. The heavy-handed Hawaiian Ray Cooper III, season two champion, season one finalist, welcomes a formidable French newcomer to professional fighters league action. It's always fireworks when Ray Cooper III gets into the cage, sometimes a little bit too much. Randy, what do we expect from him? A more conservative approach with strategy, or is it the same old Ray Cooper? Well, we, we saw in the 2019 season a little more tempered Ray Cooper. He came out a little more stuck to the game plan, a little more not quite so wide open, but still very ferocious. And he's facing a young kid with a wushu background, so that forward pressure could work in Pone's favor with those wushu takedowns. We know very well that Ray Cooper and his family have a very tight-knit camp. They've got their routine, they don't deviate from it much. But inside the PFL bubble, because of COVID protocols, Ray was forced to quarantine by himself for an entire week. He wasn't real happy about it, Ken. <laughs> no, not at all. I, he scared me, actually. But uh, <laughs> he looks like he's ready to punch faces, guys. It's that simple. Uh, he's ready to go out there and fight. Pone has been around the block, though. He's fought all over the world. Uh, as Randy says, he does come from that wushu background. He's got some good takedowns himself. He's good on the feet, and he's very confident in this one here against the 2019 champ. And with that, we send it to Lillian Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, fighting out of Bordeaux, France, here is the Amazonian Samurai, Jason Pone. His official weight, 170 and one quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Pearl City, Hawaii, he is the 2019 PFL Welterweight World Champion, Prada Ray Cooper III. His official weight, 170 and three quarter pounds. Closing the show on ESPN2, our main event, Curtis Millinder, Rory McDonald, the Red King, makes his highly anticipated, long-awaited Professional Fighters League debut, of course, postponed by a global pandemic. And look, he had to change camps in order to get a good training camp in. Rory McDonald is rearing to go, Randy. Absolutely. Moved from Canada down to Florida, training with a new camp, uh, new coaches, it reinvigorated him. He feels like he's got a lot of work, shored up some, some submissions. His conditioning is great. He's really excited to get back after it, and I'm looking forward to seeing him in this fight. Kenny, Curtis Millinder got this call on short notice. David Michaud, unfortunately, was unable to compete. He was supposed to be in the main event against Rory McDonald. That's a tall task, especially on short notice, but Millinder feels up to it. He does. Listen, he feels it's his destiny to not only fight Rory McDonald, but to go out there and beat him and finish him. In fact, supposedly he went up to Rory McDonald. He says, listen, I want the best Rory McDonald possible. That's the guy that he wants. So he's already trying to play head games with Rory. I don't want the best Rory McDonald. I don't want to fight that kind of guy. <laughs> Lillian Garcia, what do we have? And in the blue corner, fighting out of Fullerton, California, by way of San Bernardino, here is Curtis, Curtis Millender. His official weight, 171 pounds. in the red corner, fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Here is the Red King, Rory McDonald.
His official weight, 170 and one half pounds. There's the Red King on stage. Rory, it's long awaited, it's highly anticipated, and finally we are a day away from your Professional Fighters League debut. Y you've had quite a journey to get to this point. How excited are you to finally get cracking inside the PFL Smart Kick? Yeah, I'm super excited. I mean, I put in so much work uh, over 2020, having the year off, and I'm really excited to go out there and show all the hard work that I put in. Is this truly the best version of Rory McDonald in your entire career? Absolutely. I was able to take that time in 2020 to sit down and make the necessary changes, and I'm ready to come out here and, and show my best. Good luck to you in our main event. Curtis Millinder, it is, it is no small ask to say, come fight Rory McDonald on relatively short notice, but you were eager to jump at this chance. What do we expect from you tomorrow? I finish. I'm going to get that six points and uh, I'm putting Rory down. Curtis, it was all about the upsets at PFL 1, not even a week ago in the first event of our regular season. How do you carry that energy for your own fight? I'm going to take the energy and run with it. Nothing's going to change. Everybody's getting upset. Curtis Millinder, Rory McDonald, it goes down in our main event on ESPN 2 tomorrow night. We'll take one more look at our ESPN2 fight card. You just saw these gentlemen on the scale. Returning champion Emiliano Sorti taking on a tough veteran in Chris Camosi. That Brazilian rivalry that Kenny likes so much. Ray Cooper III is a heavy favorite. Jason Bonet looking to spoil the party, as is Curtis Millinder. Rory McDonald, the Red King, is back in competition. That's on ESPN2, but preceding it on ESPN+, Plus. Who cannot wait for this one? A former Randy Couture training partner? Yeah, I'll watch that. A professional wrestler? Anytime! And Jordan Young on his third opponent in a month. It's going to be an unbelievable night. Upsets galore in PFL's first event of the regular season. Is that what we have brewing here in our second? Welterweights and light heavyweights. Regular season. Playoffs, a championship. The journey begins tomorrow night on ESPN Plus at 5.30 and ESPN 2 at 9 p.m. There's the returning Argentine champion. Gleason Chiba looking beefy at 170. Brada Ray Cooper looks to come back with another $1 million prize and the Red King on the scale. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Kenny Florian, good night.